Hey guys, Mark Shaw here. Still the tent. It's kind of getting to be evening and uh, dusk, you might say. But I did the. Uh, I just did a review. which should be uploaded here in a little bit. Uh, I gotta. I gotta take off to get it to finish. But um, I did send it. I was able to send it to my buddy. And uh, I was talking to him. He called me on the messenger from California. And he says, hey, man, you're doing one on that car. I saw your first one. Why don't you do one on your, your Honda Element? Because when uh, we worked together for, oh, five years. And uh, I knew him before that uh, from the job, seen him on the jobs and stuff. And we got to be pretty good friends. O older than me. Uh, he's a little bit, I think he's about five years older than me. And... Uh, Actually, no, eight years older, eight years older. He was the same age as my one brother. Uh, Vietnam vet, really just a cool guy. And uh, I had taken him for a ride in my Honda Element. We were we had to go to a, a meeting. It was a training session for uh, high voltage electricians. And we didn't have to get on the highway out in California. It was actually going past my house where I lived at the time and then out. And I could take these uh, like industrial parks and really zoom along. So I gave him, he said, the ride of his life uh, because that car handled so well. I took that thing on track day. Now, I bought that Honda Element, uh, and I don't know why I got a, a brain freeze on the year it was, but I do remember when I went down and bought it, uh, they gave me the price, and I, I just plopped down the cash. Now, the, the dealer I bought it at was, um, uh, they had a performance shop there. And I was talking to the guy and uh, asking him about stuff. He says, oh, you know who's the, uh, the the guy who's really into this stuff? It's the owner. He just pulled up out back. Uh, come on. And they just took me right through the back. It was so cool. So I go in the back, and he's got the, I believe it was the, the Honda NSX. The, it was the first year with the six-cylinder on it. And this guy, real nice fella, 50s, late 50s. And I was talking to him, and he says, oh, which one you get? And I said, well, I got the... I bought that orange one you had. They only had two. They had a black one and, and an orange one at the time I got mine, and I got the orange one. And uh, he said, what do you want to do with it? How much How much do you want to spend? I said, well, I want, I want Speedy Car, like like Smokey and the Bandit. You know, and then when a Speedy Car, I said, yeah, speedier than that. So he said, come on, let's go inside. And we went into his office, and he had some people bring us some of their catalogs and stuff. So I wanted to get the suspension done, it was first on my mind, I wanted to soup up the motor, but we were looking at suspension stuff in the catalog, I started from the back, and it had this big bracket that went all the way from the front to the back, of course it was painted white, uh, I actually had it out to Hacienda Heights to this uh, Mexican dude who had a car place, I had him strip it and anodize it black, so I didn't want, I wanted it to be kind of a sleeper. Then I got all the body bushings on it and all every rubber bushing on the car, everywhere, gone, neoprene, tightened it up. And then we bolted this uh, frame thing on. They did, I, I had to have them do it. Uh, he said, it'll keep your warranty if we do it. Okay, cool. So we, we had all that done and then the sway bars that we, uh, shit cam to sway bars it only had one on the front it was a hollow one we had a solid one i can't remember the company i got it from i think it was a sport tech but we also put one on the back uh, i got rid of the shocks and struts and and the rear shocks and we got the performer ias uh you know it's got the internal valving for how you load it so that i wouldn't get too bad of a ride uh, then we had the motor in order to increase, uh, increase the horsepower on the motor, uh, we were looking at exhaust, and we we kept everything legal. In, in, I couldn't touch anything before the catalytic converter, uh, except for the uh, the pipe, the header pipe that came out the front. But all the rest of it had to be the same. So and then we put a cat back on it. And I told him I wanted it kind of quiet. I didn't want a loud car. Uh, we did the motor. Uh, they did some stuff with the fuel rail, the injector. He couldn't touch the computer. I had to take the computer out myself uh, and send it. It, it, and it took a couple weeks. I had to send it out to um, a place in Arizona. I believe it was in Scottsdale. And uh, I mailed it to them and then they mailed it back and I reinstalled it. But we gave them all the parameters. Uh, they did... Um, 
uh, something on the head. They did some head work to it and they got rid of the stock pistons and they put forged in there and then of course I did the blower on it so I had I had a good bit into it now when we were when we were building it up he said this motor what what we have here we can get you up just about to 800 horsepower but he said then your drive line is is screwed uh, you, you got to upgrade that and that it really started getting expensive and I was thinking I want to pay cash for all this uh, I didn't want to take a loan on it and so I said well you know what we can do he says well right now I can get you it's like a 450 horsepower package never dyno uh, he says I can I can get you up to that uh, with with the blower and I didn't have to order it like when I did my Harley I ordered my own uh, pro charger this came in like a kit and now the, the the only thing I did different than the kit was on my kit it only had an intercooler and a cold a cold air intake with an intercooler well when it got up to the bigger ones it also had an after cooler so what I did is I said I want both in case if I decide down the road I want to beef up the tranny and you know really make this thing something and uh, so okay they did that so I had I had taken I had cut out the uh, where the fog light went on the front and I put my cold air in intake there and I had that blocked off so it was kind of like a little bit of a ram air then right right behind that was the uh, intercooler then we went up over the top and I had this fella in Hacienda Heights he cut these uh, vents on the hood now we had to leave the uh, the intercooler mounted on the engine and we had a, we had a shield around the bottom but we had the fan uh, mounted to the hood blowing down through through the after cooler to help cool it off you know I want to try to cool it off as much as I could and uh, that one we were running uh, 10 pound 10 pounds of boost I believe is what that was set for uh, and it would run uh, it would run 12 seconds right around 12 seconds and a quarter mile but it was only running a little over four and a half seconds in zero to 60, which I don't care who you are, that's, that's speedy. Now, once I got it and I got it broken in and started driving it, it didn't need anything else. It did not need anything else. It, it was so stable on the road. You could come up to a, a right-hand turn uh, at an intersection and uh, at 40 and just cut the wheel cut the wheel and hit the gas and this thing would just bite I put these uh, I got the lightest uh, 17 inch rims I could get it came with 15 uh, and I had take the, taken the brand new ones off uh, the guy down at the tire place uh, and the rim shop they got real nice ones in California I asked for the lightest and uh, they had some advertised as light but he says hey I got some here that are really light and it was some kind of off-brand they looked nice uh, so I went ahead and I put those on and then I had the Kumho tires and I said as wide as it'll go on this car without hitting anything and so it had like baloney skins on it real you know real low wide and then I also did uh, I did EBC brakes all the way around rotors all the way around and then of course their pads they're they're real good pads for that and transmission stayed stock and after I got it I had thought to myself you know maybe down the road I'll beef it up even more but the drivability of this car when you drove it down the road and you were just tooling it was a great car which you know other than the tires nobody you know they just thought it was a Honda element and it, and it rode it was tight I had I had a couple comments said yeah the suspension's tight they nobody said it was harsh but it was tight and I also had my driver's seat done by the same guy down in Hacienda Heights they bolstered the sides uh, so and I also had uh, individual leg belts put in uh, they cut through the center of the seat and and bolted that to the floor you know I I was held in really good the steering on that thing was great there was no torque steer that was that all-wheel drive system that it had on it and uh, when you really got into it 
and if you'd hit something when I drive it up through the mountains and stuff and sometimes you'd hit hit some bad spots on the road that suspension just really opened up and kept the tires on the road uh, even though it wasn't a super high horsepower it wasn't a super fast quarter miler and it wasn't the fastest zero to sixty once you got this little puppy rolling that's all you had to do. I had it uh, many track days. Uh, there was the only. I, there was a lot of a lot of guys had Miatas. They had the uh, Honda S two thousands and all that. Ate them for lunch. Uh, that little car, because when they were breaking into the corners, I wasn't breaking yet. <laughs> I was not breaking yet. I was still full on the gas. Then I'd smash brakes and cut the wheel. That that thing just and load up the front. Of that thing just handled well, and I could I could pull out of the corners. And uh, I even had one guy said he's going to start doing stuff to his car to try to pull out because pulling out of the corners. This thing just at all RPMs. It just had plenty of power. Fantastic, fantastic vehicle. The only guy who was would regularly trounce me out of the corners the, this fella and he had a cool car and he spent some money but he had a Mazda Miata with a stick shift in it and it had um, a 4.6 Ford motor in it <laughs> and with Cobra farts and stuff and I was like damn and he he paid a little bit more than I paid for mine I think total I had I didn't I didn't have I had 35,000 I think 36 for everything and that was the price of the car and all and I think he said he had a, he had 40 some thousand 45 something like that into his and boy that thing was really something it, it was the the modern day Cobra you might call it because that was that was a very cool machine if I'd have stayed working a little bit longer I uh, and I wouldn't have been so big I might have had one myself but the Miatas are a little cramped for me but uh, that was my that was my Honda element and I'm sure if it would have been stock I know right after I think it was the next year of mine uh, they came out with the turbo in that one and I don't know what it kicked out to mine from stock was 150 eight horsepower I believe was stock uh, with that it was a 2400 motor and I, I the, the motor work I don't think that was the big stuff the blower was the blower was expensive uh, that that big rack on the bottom to tighten it up and then I didn't they did all the work the Honda did all the work so that it would keep the warranty uh, now the the tires I did myself and the exhaust from the catalytic converter on back they did that beautiful pipe up in the front and then I did everything in the back I had a guy an exhaust guy uh, I mean he he was a numbers guy they sent him all the stuff they did to it everything was on paper no dyno they sent everything to him I sent him all the stuff I had from the people in Scottsdale and all that and he came up with a, a CFM number that I needed but I wanted to keep it quiet you know, he said, boy, we could, you know, we could get a little bit more probably out of this if you start dyno running it, doing all this. And I said, nah, I'm, I spent all I got. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm down to my last few hundred bucks on this. I'm not going to go in debt for this car. It's got to be on what I had. And he says, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And he put me a, a really good muffler on there. Then he put a resonator in the back with a nice square tip on it so it looked cool. It had everything tucked up real nice. And that was my speedy Honda Element. Uh, I, out of all the cars, I've had a lot of cars and a lot of trucks. Uh, my favorite truck I had was a, a Ford 150, a 2010, with that 4.6 with Cobra stuff on it, uh, you know, from the dealer. Uh, that was a great truck, two-wheel drive, nothing fancy, automatic. But the Honda was absolutely my favorite vehicle. I fit in it. I could sit straight up and down. Uh, you know, the Ford, I was slouching because they're not, for somebody 6'8", they're not that great. And I have a uh, long from my butt to the top of my head. So, you know, it wasn't super comfortable. Uh, my most comfortable cars were the old Lincoln, 73, 74 Lincolns. Uh, those, those were really nice. And the older trucks seemed to have more room. My 50 Plymouth had tons of room. But uh, as the years went on, it seemed like cars were cramped. I remember my brother, we went for a ride in his beautiful Cadillac. And I didn't say much to him, but you know what? I, I, didn't, I wouldn't want it. 
you know, even him, he was scrounged down. You were, you're, you're kind of scrounged down to fit in these things. But that Honda Element, I could keep the seat straight up, straight up and down on the back. And Honda's got the best seats. My seat was modified. They brought out big bolsters on the side. They this dude had an upholstery shop. They completely stripped it, welded in uh, nice brackets on it, cut the center out, um, went with a went with a, a flexible plate instead of the springs in there, uh, leathered it. They did it with a really nice. I think he called it cambretta, so that you you stuck. It, it had all the little holes in it. Paid a lot for the seat. Uh, I did pay a lot, but I. I don't think I paid too much for what I got. Uh, I believe I really got a fantastic deal from him. And, uh, you know, I took people for rides and that just couldn't believe it. Uh, they just couldn't believe that you could go up to a corner at 40, 45 and just cut the wheel and make the corner. And it, it just didn't really lean. It just bit and get. So that's, that's my review of my Honda Element. If I could have brought it here, I would have. That would have been my vehicle for here. Uh, now, it was a little bit lower. I probably would have wanted the stock tires to get it up off the ground a little bit. Um, but, that it, you know, it was what it was. So, that's for you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> my first, my absolute first subscriber to my channel. You, you take her easy, Ned. Thanks for uh, thanks for think, thinking about the uh, element. Uh, I did mention it in this last video, and uh, it was kind of like the glory days before I came here. It was an absolutely fantastic vehicle, and it was really uh, started my love affair with Honda Motor Corporation. There, they make a fantastic vehicle, just like this one. So that's it for me on that one, and I'll get it posted whenever I can, probably not till tomorrow, but uh, you all take care. Don't forget to pray for each other.